I, I want to go back, by the way, again, to, I guess, fall camp, whatever. Uh, maybe really, I guess it was spring, I, whenever it happened. But a young, fiery freshman named Steven Garcia steps on campus, which obviously, again, threw another dynamic uh, in the quarterback room. And yet just another quarterback to compete with. I'm sure you loved that. Yeah. Um, talk about, again, we all know, like, Garcia's history at South Carolina. Again, had him on the show multiple times. He's a friend of the show, friend of mine. His history at Carolina is well documented, and, and it, there's a reason the legend of Garcia lives on at USC. Yeah. And I'm sure it was funny for you watching it after you left, like watching him do what he did, go to the yeah. SEC championship, and like it was really cool too. But like the like, what was he like as a true freshman? Like I I know like he was like a loose cannon, and he he matured as the years went on. But he's still like to this day. The thing I love about Stephen Garcia, he just is who he is. Like you have to respect it. You know what I mean? Like that dude is true to himself to a T, and if you don't like it, he doesn't give a damn. Like, what, what was that like? Again, you're competing with him for the job, but I'm sure, like, in a sense, you're kind of mentoring this guy, like, helping him out. Like, hey, this is this is what you got to do to play quarterback in the SEC. This is how you got to be on the field, off the field, especially off the field. I mean, like, what was that like, getting to uh, – building that relationship with him and battling with him for reps, if you will? Yeah. Oh, man, I, I love Steven, and, and we still keep in touch with, like, random text messages and stuff like that. Um and uh, but yeah, coming in, man, he, he he sort of came in wild, you know, wild and carefree and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. Um, the long hair, the beard, uh, all of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he he is he is definitely uh, you know a one of a kind kind of guy, and um, and I, I I agree with all the stuff you kind of said about him. It's like it's, he is who he is, you yeah. know. Um, and uh, and so you know, I can. I can definitely like you know sort of remember trying to like talk to him about like dude what are you doing man like you know, he's got all he's got great talent all this kind of stuff and he would just like do the dumbest stuff like he'd have an awesome practice and then he'd like show up late to meetings the next day or something yeah. and just like try to find ways to get in the doghouse all the time uh it was almost like it, it's just that's what got him excited about things or something um and um and uh but but yeah i mean i, I think that um that, that number five uh, with, with just his style of play and, and the character that he is and his, his look and his moxie, um, man, he, he definitely carved out a, a pretty awesome space for himself uh, as, a, as a game cop. Now, you talked about you torched Mississippi schools, and that certainly was no exception there. 2008 at Ole Miss, <clears throat> you went 22-32, 327 yards, three touchdowns. I remember specifically, uh, Chris, that was the – Jason Barnes game. Jason had a big day. I think he had two touchdown catches. I think it was two or yeah. three, man. Yeah, two. I think. Um, I think Jared Cook had the other one. But either way, he had a big game. You had a big game. Just, just talk about that day because that was a big win going on the road in Oxford. I want to say that was maybe the first win over Ole Miss, like at their or something. I, I don't. I think we hadn't beaten Ole Miss in quite a while. And uh, but again, to go on the road, SEC West opponent again. I was thinking to myself, maybe because you're an Alabama guy, you like playing against those SEC West teams. I don't know, but uh, yeah. you go on the road, ball out. Obviously, that was a big win, especially at that point in the season, if I remember correctly. Yeah, just just talk about that game. And again, what was the connection with Jason Barnes? I mean, I, that dude had a heck of a game that day. Yeah, he did. And I, I can remember I, I threw a, a post route over the middle uh, into the back of the end zone and about got him knocked out on one of those. Yeah, I remember that one, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, going into that game, um, you know, that was a cool game. That was actually so the, the week before that, Ole Miss had just beat uh, Florida. Oh, Florida that's right, the Tebow Florida game. One, and that was, the, that was the Tebow speech game yeah. um, and all that kind of stuff. So that, that's kind of a, a cool little thing there, too. So kind of going into that game, and they were, you know, I, I probably feeling very confident. Um, and, and, yeah, so it was, you know, one of those games where that, that was one of my better games. And uh, the guys made plays. I mean, they, the catch that Jason Barnes had, I think Dion LaCorn might have scored a touchdown. Mm -hmm. and Jared Cook uh, caught about a 75-yard pass and, and almost took it uh, to the end zone. Um, <clears throat> so, again, it was like it was like kind of how we've hinted at a little bit. It was like there was – these opportunities throughout these these couple of years where we it almost felt like we were getting ready to turn the corner, uh, but it wasn't quite happening, mm -hmm. um, you know. And and kind of as things continued to progress, next thing you know, you know, <clears throat> a couple of years later, obviously the the, the big South Carolina uh, win versus Alabama, going to mm -hmm. SEC championship, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think we were we were sort of laying the groundwork there in a lot of ways oh, yeah. of like really being able to compete with some with some really good teams. Um, and you know, we weren't maybe as consistent, uh, as, as you would have wanted to be obviously. Um, but, but sort of, 
sort of making progress um, along the ways there in those those first couple of years with Coach Spurrier. Now, I want to move into that home game against Arkansas, Chris, because that one specifically I remember vividly. I was there uh, in person. And you know what's so funny about that one, too? Something that jumps out. I'm sure you remember. That was the Michael Phelps weekend um, that he got in all that trouble in five points. Uh, he, he, I, remember, I remember they introduced him at halftime, and that was like two days later. It's a picture of Phelps doing some inappropriate things. Whatever. That was just like a funny side note of that weekend. But specifically another, – another, another funny side note of that thing, we, were, we actually um, – I think it might have been – like right before the right before the game, or maybe like the after the game, we were we actually there were some guys hanging out with Michael Phelps, and uh, one of my buddies, Hutch Eckerson, mm-hmm. they were getting ready to jump in a car and like drive somewhere, and uh, and Hutch was getting in the front seat of the car, and or he opened the door. Michael Phelps tried to get in the front seat, and Hutch said, "No, nah, buddy, you can get in the back." <laughs> and uh, it, it told Michael Phelps he had to sit in the back of the car. Uh, I don't even think Hutch knew who Michael Phelps was at the time. He, he wasn't quite as, as popular or what, as well known or whatever at that exact moment. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'll never forget that Hutch saying, "No, nah, man, you can sit in the back of the car." <laughs> Very good. Put him in his place. You're in Columbia now. Um, That's right. No, so that game specifically, though, I was there in person, and you and Stephen Garcia literally switched out every single play. And I know yeah. that was something Spurrier did at Florida in the '90s, and. Spurrier can do whatever he wants. We understand that. But, like, I've talked to Garcia about that and and his feelings on it. And I remember he told me that he literally told Coach Spurrier, you ever do that again, I'm transferring. (laughs) So, I'd love to hear, like, your thoughts. Because, again, we talked about just going drive to drive and how that can mess with the quarterback psyche. Like, dude, we're talking play to play. I mean, that had to be, like, the craziest experience for you, like, playing in a game. Now, Yeah, that, that one was even worse because now you're thinking when you go in there, I got to try to make something happen. <laughs> this play. Yeah. Like, like, you know, just handing the ball off and running the ball for four <clears> yards. <throat> I think that's not going to impress nobody. Yeah. Like I'm trying to, what I need to do, like audible to play and like try to, you know, try to hit a deep pass <laughs> or something. Um, yeah. That, that game, that game was wild. And I, I don't, I don't even hardly remember. I don't think we discussed doing that. Going up I was going to ask, did y'all talk about that in pregame? Was that something that, yeah, right. uh, like looking back, it, it doesn't stand out that we like we never. Pra- I know we didn't practice that in practice, right. uh, rotating like that. Um, but I don't think we even discussed it in pregame. It, it was literally you know, some little trick that, that Steve had up his sleeve or something that he was getting ready to, to surprise us with. Um, because definitely did not have any knowledge like going into that game that that was about to happen. Uh, but me and Steven over there on the sideline, like, what the <laughs> heck is going on? <laughs> this, is, this is ridiculous. Um, and uh but we won the game right uh yeah yeah that's what i was gonna say that you can't say anything to coach Spurrier because we won the game so the more more, as you're as you're you're talking about all this stuff like i'm I'm able to remember everything um yeah jared Jared cook had the long touchdown he he took that uh that crossing pattern all the way up for that that long that was one that stands out that that memory from that game he had a really great game um but yeah i mean i like i wonder if that's happened in college football since that game like, I, I don't know if it ever has or not. I mean, because you just, you just don't see that um, really going on. But, yeah, I mean, every, every day I'm going to play, it's wild. 